This is the low res car. It is insane. I mean that in the best possible way. I love insane, and this certainly qualifies because, well, just take a look at it. Today, I'm going to review the low res car, certainly one of the most bizarre and interesting vehicles I've ever seen. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era. We've had some amazing sales recently on Cars and Bids, including this 2007 Shelby GT500, which sold for over $81,000 and had just 100 miles on it, a record price for one of these. Also, this NA Mazda Miata with a Chevy V8 swap sold for $27,000, and this Toyota Land Cruiser Heritage Edition brought $93,000. If you're looking to sell your cool enthusiast car, Cars and Bids is the place to do it. You'll get the most interest and views and bids on your car. And if you're looking to buy a cool car from the modern era, the 1980s and up, check out Cars and Bids with a great selection of daily auctions at carsandbids.com. I've borrowed this car here in Los Angeles from the Peterson Museum and Drive H2, which is an environmental nonprofit focusing on zero emission and specifically hydrogen fuel cell vehicle technology. The Peterson and Drive H2 will be auctioning the low res car soon, which means you can actually buy this crazy vehicle coming up soon. The proceeds will benefit both groups, the Peterson and Drive H2. You can learn more about Drive H2 and and the fantastic Peterson Museum by clicking the link in the description below. But let's talk low res car. As you might imagine, that stands for a low resolution. And the design for this car came from basically taking a Lamborghini Countach and then lowering the resolution to get it down to its basic shape, which became a car. This car. The low res car was designed by United Nude, the footwear company, and it's absolutely bizarre, as you can see. Now, it does have a drivetrain, and I will be driving it, but it's limited to lower speeds because it's mostly for show. Still, it was the sheer bizarreness of the low res car that attracted me to it, and I had to know the quirks and features of this crazy vehicle. And so today, that's exactly what I'm going to do. First, I'll take you on a thorough tour of the low res car and show you those quirks and features. Then I'll get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'll give it a Doug score. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the low res car by answering a few basic questions you probably have about it, starting with the design. Now, like I said, the goal was to create like a Lamborghini Countach, except in its most basic design version, a lower resolution version of the Countach. And as you can see, that's about what they've done. This is the same basic overall shape as the Countach, just without any of the texture or resolution, basically. Now, like I said, it was designed by United Nude, the footwear company and it was intended to be sort of a promotional item for them. I guess they would bring it to events, whatever, and people would look at it and talk about it and, well, that clearly worked because here we are looking at it and talking about it. Now, despite the appearance, in terms of performance, this is no Countach. It has a small electric motor in it right now and performance is rather limited. I'm told it can top out around 30 miles per hour if it can even get that fast. Now, Drive H2, the nonprofit that will be auctioning this off, they want to convert it to a hydrogen powertrain, but either way, it's not like a big V12 like the Countach had that makes it go very fast. This is more of a showpiece than an actual drivable, usable car. But anyway, more about the low res car, and specifically about its construction. It's made out of several flat panels, as you can see. I counted 12 total flat panels. They tell me it's polycarbonate, and all of the panels that you see on the outside are see-through, so the entire vehicle is basically windows, and when you're on the inside, you can easily see out, although being on the outside, it's difficult to see in. Now you can see the overall design has the entire body kind of come to a point in the center, like at the top, sort of like the Tesla Cybertruck. As you can see, it's sort of a similar design ethos, although it's worth noting that the low res car actually came out before the Cybertruck was debuted, so this is sort of a predecessor to that crazy triangular design shape that comes to a point in the center. Now as for the 
chassis that this crazy body sits on. I'm not exactly sure what it is. It might be custom made. It seems a little beefier and a little larger than the chassis you'd find on a golf cart, but that's basically the idea of what this is. About that size tires, about that size motor, about that size performance. So basically you have this 12 panel polycarbonate triangle design sitting on what looks to be sort of maybe a modified or upgraded golf cart chassis. And like I mentioned before, this is mostly intended as a show car, not really as a drivable, usable vehicle. It was mostly to turn heads and make a statement. And so it doesn't have any lighting. As you can see, you look around the back, there's no real lighting back there. Same deal in the front. You don't really have lights in this vehicle that are immediately obvious, although there is actually some lighting, but it's hidden. And I will get to that a little bit more in a second. But before I get to that, let's talk about getting inside the car. Now, when you're trying to get in from the outside, there is only one way. You have this little handheld key fob that has been programmed to control various parts of the car. And to get in, you first extend the antenna of the key fob, probably not really all that necessary, and then button four will open up the car. Press it, and this is what happens. The entire body of the car lifts up and opens up electronically as you're holding down the button on the key fob, therefore revealing the interior. There are no doors to this vehicle. There's no windows that roll down you climb in. The only way to get inside is the key fob, press the button, and everything lifts up which gives you access to the interior. Absolutely a bizarre situation, but that's how it's done in this car. Now, you may be wondering, well, why is it button four on the key fob? You'd think that would be the most important function, should be button number one. Well, it isn't. This car is very weird, and that is a weird part of it. And for more weird with this car, we have the interior. Now, the first thing you notice when the body has been lifted up so you can climb inside is that there are two seats in this car making the low-res car relatively practical. Front and rear, they're tandem seats, so that's all you get. And they're fixed in that position, so you can't move them. Whatever position they're in, that's where you're sitting in this car. And as you might imagine, getting in is a little bit of a challenge since you're contending with the body right above you. Allow me to attempt to climb inside. First, you have to clear the body, like I did. Then you have to sort of slide under the steering wheel, and then Oh, you can be inside the low-res car. Now, the seats themselves are rather comfortable. They are nice leather seats, and the seat backs kind of preserve the theme of this car's design in the sense that you can see they're angled chrome, kind of keeping that like angled look from the outside and taking it into the inside with the seats. Also keeping that angled design, although frankly probably a little bit more bizarrely, is the steering wheel, which you can see is a hexagon, and it's all angled chrome once again. It's not really a wheel, instead it is a very bizarre looking like piece of chrome hexagon that's just screwed onto a plate which attaches to the steering column, and this is your steering wheel. Again, sort of keeps that angular theme from the outside of the car, so it fits. Speaking of steering though, the steering column itself of this vehicle is rather terrifying. It looks like if you were in an accident, it would get pushed into you and absolutely impale you and kill you instantly. Although it is worth noting that the low res car can't really go fast enough for that to be a huge risk. So that makes it a little bit safer, but still doesn't look like the safest thing I've ever seen. Now at the base of the steering column, you have two pedals on the right, of course, the accelerator and on the left is the brake, although they are not close enough to each other to be operated by one foot. So when you're driving the low res car, you will be doing two foot driving, your right foot on the accelerator and your left foot on the brake pedal, which is a little bit strange for most people when they drive, but that's how you gotta drive this thing if you want to experience the low res car. Now, one of the most interesting things in this interior is the control panel that the driver is able to operate. You can see a series of controls to the right of the driver's seat and the steering wheel, and they control a few items on the car. Now, the outermost switch in this control panel, that turns on the lights. If you activate that, a headlight bar turns on in the front and illuminates the front of the car. And at the same time, a tail light bar turns on in the back and illuminates the rear of the car, so you have front and rear lights, although it's worth noting they're really just kind of for show. They're not very bright, not intended to actually like drive you around at night. 
but they're there. Now, the next little toggle switch here says logo, and if you toggle that, then the United Nude logo actually turns on on the outside of the car near the front and rear. You can see a front United Nude logo goes on, and same deal in the rear. This was very important. This car was used as a promotional vehicle for United Nude, and so that logo has to turn on in order to actually promote. So you can toggle that logo on or off using that switch. Now, next up, your next interesting control in this little panel, there's a switch labeled interior. If you press that, well, nothing happens actually. You can't see anything turn on. So what's going on? Ah, uh, there are interior lights, but they are hidden. You open up these little steel doors on either side of the seating compartment, and that's where your interior lights are. Then you flip that switch, and you can see they all go on, and they're actually quite bright, and they light up this vehicle. The entire interior is visible. Now, the cool thing about these interior lights, they provide great ambiance when the car is sitting in the dark. If you have the interior lights on, but the car in the dark, you sort of only see the shape in this weird glow, and it looks pretty neat, but that's how you do it. That's how you activate the interior lights in the low-res car. But anyway, next up, a highly important switch in this little control area is marked Open Close. And you can use that switch to open or close the body around you. I told you the only way to open it from the outside is with that fob. You press it and it opens. But on the inside, you can use the fob or you can use this switch. And if you push the switch down for close, then the body begins to close. That essentially functions as a door. Of course, when the body is completely closed, then you can drive the car. But as you can see, the body closes automatically, just like it did with the fob when I opened it. And of course, if you toggle the switch in the other direction, Obviously, it opens the body, so that's how you climb out of the low-res car. I don't want to think about what would happen if the battery in this car died, because I suspect this wouldn't work, and I'm not sure I'd be able to get out and be trapped in this thing until it could charge. But let's not think about that. That's how the body works. Okay, and finally, our last little control in here is actually the gear lever for the low-res car. It's the same exact toggle switch as all the lights, but it's the gear lever. You move it forward for drive, and then it stays in drive, and then you press the accelerator and you can go. You move it backwards for reverse, and then you're in reverse, and same deal. Press the accelerator to go backwards, and then if it's in the middle, you're in neutral, and you're not really going anywhere. And those are your toggle switches in the low-res car. Now, a couple of other items worth noting in this little driver's control panel area. For one, you have a keyhole, basically an ignition hole, where you can turn on the car. Strangely, there are two keys. So you have a key and then also a spare key in case you lose the key to your low-res car. You also here have a little display that shows your current battery charge level, and it tells you exactly how much battery you have remaining. It gives basically a percentage charge you have left. Not incredibly accurate, but it gives you a basic idea. This display will also show you the voltage of the battery just to make sure everything is working out okay and all systems are working properly. So that is the control area in the low-res car. Now, it's worth noting that that little battery display is not the only display you have in the low-res car. There is also another one at the very front of this interior, like in front of the steering column, and that has two display screens on it. Over on the left, it gives some number. That always seems to be in the 200s, but I'm not exactly sure what that number is. On the right, you have what looks like a speedometer. It appears to be in kilometers per hour, and that tells you how fast you're going as you're driving your low-res car. But that's it. Those are all the controls you get in this interior, nothing else. You get three controls for different lights in this car, but there's no radio, no climate controls, no power windows, none of that stuff. You can clearly tell this is a showpiece more than anything. Very much decontented, not much stuff. In fact, in terms of equipment, it's rather low res. <laughs> Now, one interesting thing about the interior of this car is if you're sitting in the driver's seat, you actually have pretty good headroom because the driver's seat is positioned so that the driver is sitting at exactly the top of the pyramid of these body panels. So basically, you're sitting in the place with the very best headroom possible where they all meet at the top in the middle, sort of like the top center of a tent. But you may be wondering, what about the rear seat? So let's find out. Okay, I'm gonna start by climbing into the rear seat of the low res car. I am always climbing into these back seats and it is always difficult to do. And I imagine that will be true in this case also. Oh, like I said, these seats are fixed in place. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so there is no room basically in the back seat of this. Oh, I will put my seat on the front seat because that's the only way that I can make this work. Now, since we were talking headroom, 
with my feet wrapped around the driver like I'm riding a motorcycle. Since we're talking headroom, let's close this and see what happens then. All right, it's going down and I'm getting nervous. And the answer is headroom is actually okay back here too. As you can see, I have headroom in the back of the low res car. I thought it would just be the driver who had enough space for the head, but the rear seat passenger does too. I'm sitting in here relatively comfortable, at least from a headroom perspective. Legroom is an absolute disaster and could certainly be improved in the next generation low res car. But anyway, let's finish up with the interior of this car because there is more to discuss. Allow me to lift open the body so I can talk to you again. Anyway, yes, mechanicals. Like I said, small electric motor, top speed around 30 miles an hour. It's not exactly a speed demon, this car. And Drive H2 wants to convert it to a hydrogen propulsion system to go along with their sort of nonprofit goals of hydrogen vehicle propulsion. Now, one interesting thing with the mechanicals of this car, up front there is a lot of stuff that's exposed. As you can see, the suspension is very exposed. In fact, when you're driving this car along, you can sort of see the suspension going up and down and doing all its traveling right in front of you. Same deal with the steering. As you move the steering wheel, you can see all of the steering kind of happening, all the mechanical components happening directly in front of you. Strangely enough, though, even though they left all of that stuff visible, the wheels are covered, both front and rear completely covered, so you can't see those from the outside. So the suspension, the steering, that's all visible, but the wheels they decided to hide. That's especially odd in a car that has front wheels that turn like virtually all cars do because then they have to turn around in this housing that's created for them rather than be able to freely move. But I guess the wheels have enough space to do their turning even inside this. They thought it would give it a sleeker look, I guess, with the wheels covered up. And by the way, one other item worth noting up front around all the mechanical stuff, you have a little VIN plate there. It's sort of a mock-up of an actual VIN plate. And it says it was made by United Nude, whatever. It also says this is the third one of these, chassis number three, suggesting there are other low res cars out there, which is rather strange, or maybe there were prototypes that were made. I can only imagine more of these. <laughs> it's a very bizarre vehicle. You really only need just one, but maybe for promotional purposes, they wanted a couple extra. And so those are the many quirks and features of the very quirky low res car. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the low res car. This is terrifying. <laughs> okay, first thing I noticed uh, ridiculous reflections from the silver panel onto the, you know, it's kind of hot in here. It's all windows. <laughs> this is an interesting experience. Now the seat doesn't move. So my legs are, I'm right up. Like my knees are compressed. Like I'm crouching almost trying to drive this thing. And I noticed that the steering column would probably impale me if I get in any form of accident. So that's kind of terrifying. With that said, this is kind of cool. <laughs> this is not, not cool. I'm driving the weirdest thing on the planet, basically. Very, very interesting. Okay, now brake is with my left foot. Oh, a lot of brake. <laughs> okay. All right. Now I'm going to try to turn around. There's no mirrors, which I've only just realized. There's also no seat belts, which is not an ideal situation, but that is, in fact, the case. I'm going to punch it here. Ooh. Ooh, not much. Not much happening when you floor it, although the body kind of shakes. Oh my god, this is so weird. This is the weirdest vehicle I've ever driven by. There's other cars on the road. I can only imagine what they're thinking. They're probably thinking I'm insane, which is of course true. All right, now I'm really gonna floor it. Yeah, it's the, oh boy, oh boy. I'm going like 12, but it feels like faster because it's so low and the body is shaking and stuff is rattling. This is insane. What is this vehicle? This is absolutely the most bizarre experience. I can see the road beneath me because the, the, the platform of the thing doesn't completely cover everything. Surprisingly maneuverable, actually. Reasonably acceptable vehicle. Now I use reverse to, I use a toggle switch to shift into reverse, which is very weird. The steering wheel is also, you know, like angled to match the car, which is fine, but like, it's not a wheel, it's just like a hexagon and it's chrome. This thing is so bizarre and watching it move, wow, you can see the suspension work, which is kind of interesting if you've never seen that before. Watching it move must be absolutely crazy. I'm gonna get some shots of it moving in a second, which I'm very curious about. You don't go very fast. Man, this is the most bizarre experience of my life. I've driven some weird cars, but this might just be weird car number ultimate here. It's showing me 15, 14 in the speedometer, but there's no way I'm going 15 miles an hour. I feel like I'm going about four, perhaps that's kilometers. 
It's, the other thing is showing me 202. I have no clue what that means. Hopefully not miles of range. Can you imagine driving this 202 miles? Okay, I'm gonna attempt a U-turn here. Oh, whoa, whoa, this is testing the limits of the handling. It's doing okay though. It's doing okay. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. This is truly the craziest thing I have ever driven. The, but when you go over bumps, the body just kind of like shakes a little bit. And you're like, uh, okay. I'm gonna floor it again. Whoa. Not much happening, and a lot of stuff creeps. And now it's showing that I'm going 28, 29, but that's not miles an hour for sure. It's, that is like too fast. This is like a child backyard project. <laughs> I don't want to be going that fast in this thing. I have to tell you though, driving this around is so cool. The thing is, we're, we're holding up traffic when I make these U-turns, but everybody like wants to stop because they're like, what is this thing? I don't mind seeing it. Let's take a look at that. Oh my God, this is so bizarre. This is definitely one of the most bizarre automotive experience of my entire life. Uh, <laughs> what is this thing? What have I gotten myself into here? And so that's the low res car, which might be the single strangest car I have ever reviewed. The Peterson Museum is kind of famous for this stuff. Remember, they also provided me with the Honda S2000 from the Fast and the Furious, which I also reviewed. And their collection has many more amazing vehicles too. But this might just be the strangest. And now it's time to give the low res car a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, <laughs> come on, admit it, the low-res car is very cool, and I think it looks awesome, and it gets an 8 out of 10. Acceleration, um, this is usually measured in 0 to 60. The low-res car won't do 60 or even 30, so it gets a 1 out of 10. Handling is not great, and it gets a 1 out of 10. Fun factor, though, is cool. It's not especially fun to drive, but it's fun when you're driving it, knowing you're basically cruising down the street in a UFO, and it gets a 6 out of 10. Finally, cool factor, and this would pretty much shut down any car and coffee. It's very cool and it gets an 8 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 24 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features. It has pretty much none and it gets a 1 out of 10. Comfort, it's not very comfortable. The seats aren't especially supportive and it's very hot inside the triangle and it gets a 1 out of 10. Quality is okay, I guess. There's not much to it, but it seems like a reasonably acceptable build for what it is and it gets a 3 out of 10. Practicality is very poor since it can't really even keep up with traffic and it gets a 1 out of 10. Finally, value, and I really don't know what it's worth, but it'll be more than you think, largely because it's such an interesting art piece. I really don't know what to put here, so I'll just give it a 5 out of 10 and move on to the total daily score of 11 out of 50. Add it up and the Doug score is 35 out of 100, which places it here against other weird cars I've reviewed. The low res car looks amazing and it's very cool, but functionally it's uh, uh, a bit limited, as you might expect from a vehicle whose primary purpose is to be art.